Hi, it's Mark for Ableton Daily. Reducing peak frequencies in music and on audio clips, this can reduce ear fatigue for the listener and just makes your music a lot more pleasant to listen to. And to do this, it's very easy. To show you first, I'm going to just play this synthesizer pad, and this will show you a before and after. First, I will start with the EQ being applied to this channel, so you can hear the before, and then I will turn it off here, and then you can hear what the sound or the audio originally sounded like to begin with. So let's go ahead and play this. Okay, let's turn it off. Now that you can see with the EQ off, we have those ringy tonalities in there before. So we'll want to reduce those just to make it a lot more warmer and more pleasant to listen to. Okay, I'll turn it on. And see, it just has a nice, much more smoother sound. All right, so before I begin and show you how this is done, it's fairly easy to do, uh, but I'll go ahead and reset my EQ8. And all I've done here is I've just inserted this EQ8 onto this audio channel up here, and I've dragged a synthesizer pad from my sample library onto the track. And I've set up some loop markers here so I could just loop over the sound, which is highly recommended. You want to have a constant repeating of the sound to really dial in on those peaks. So before I begin, I will reset the EQ. I can just right click here and it's a little bit off the screen, but right down here it says reset all gains. And that'll put that back to normal. By default, Ableton gives you, I think, up to four filters to work with. So I'll just be starting with, well, I guess I'll start with number four here. And what I'll be doing is sweeping through the, the, fre the frequency spectrum, starting at the high frequency and moving down towards the low. When we do this though, we're going to want to uh, click on one of these little uh, bars here, these little filters, and move them up. Now by default, it might look something like this but you'll want to increase the resonance all the way as high as it goes. So it only goes up to 18, so that's really good. You want a really, a real narrow resonance for this. So you want something that looks just like this. Okay, so what I'll do is go ahead and start the audio and it'll start to loop and I will sweep through the frequency and find those peaks. You can see that one just stands out, it's pretty loud, so I'm going to probably go with that one. Let's go ahead and play that back. And just keep moving it around, move it around until you find, you find the loudest point of that tone or that frequency. Okay, after I'm happy with it, I found it, I've, I've dialed in as much as I can. I can reduce the gain of this filter, and what that will do is just lower the initial gain of that particular frequency area. So I'll come over here to the gain knob and just lower this down. Now you may be asking, well, how low do you go? Well, it can depend. It could depend on how, you, how you're listening to the sound. If it's uh, lowering too much, it might reduce some of the character in the sound, so you may, may not want that. 
A good rule of thumb is to stay around minus 3, minus 6, minus 12 dB, somewhere in that range. Uh, I usually go about minus 6 in some extreme cases. You can go down to minus 12. And I've even seen people just sweep it all the way down to minus 15 dB. Okay, for those really loud annoyances, those ringy tones that you just don't want in there. So for this, I'll just set it somewhere. We'll just go down to 12 for now so you can really hear the, the before and after. So that's one. So we have something going on there at about, uh, you know, three and a half kilohertz. That's fine. Pretty common. Let's go ahead and grab another filter and find another one. Okay, so that one's pretty noticeable. And as soon as I find it, I'll come over here to the gain and reduce the gain. Just like this. All right, let's hear before and after. This is before. And after. So it just has much, a much warmer pleasant sound to it, much smoother, even balance of sound when we do this. And I can continue this all the way down the spectrum. Now, you can use this and do this for uh, drum sounds, uh, guitar sounds, uh, it could be, you know, horn sounds, and you'll find that there's uh, other instruments, there are certain instruments that have higher peak frequencies than others. Uh, if you have an annoying ringy hum sound in a bass drum or something, or in a kick drum, you can reduce that. You can even do it with an audio loop or like a, uh, like a drum loop. You can do that as well. You can reduce those frequencies. So I hope this helps you in just uh, smoothing out your sound a little bit better. You can also do this for an overall mix uh, if you're, you know... Of course, I recommend uh, always hi having someone else master your material, but uh, the mastering engineer will sometimes look for those peak frequencies in music just to make everything a lot more warmer and more pleasant to listen to. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.